All right, so here we have Maryland versus Hiroshi Yamamoto of Pokemon Smash. Uh, Maryland leading with the Breloom and Lyford combo against Hiroshi's Amoongus and Jellicent combo. Scott, what do you think so far? Uh, not a bad start for Maryland here. Um, I think Breloom will be a pretty good Pokemon in this matchup with all the uh, water types on Hiroshi's end, so could see some... Good impact from Braylon here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the item on Amoongus is here. Uh, obviously, it's been common to use Lum uh, among most of the more competitive players, but I know this is a a little... Uh, I guess the, the play style of this team is uh, unique, I guess. It, it's not just a standard good stuff team, so he may have chosen a different item for it. Um, I guess I'm not completely sure what to expect from this one, but I, I do like the Lilum lead into this, so I think it should go all right. Yeah, both teams look pretty interesting from team preview. Hiroshi going with a lot of water types, while Maryland's using more of an obscure team. I mean, we saw Cherim, uh, Ninetales, Lyford, Breloom, Licky Licky, and a lot of very not standard stuff coming from Maryland, who's pretty well known to go into regionals with some pretty fun stuff instead of the uh, standard stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this match would be uh, doing it justice if we just given him y'all at the six most common Pokemon or whatever. So this should be fun. Uh, I'm, I'm not completely certain what Licky Licky or Cherim do. Um, so I'm eager to find out, but uh should be fun. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Cherim, of course, with the, uh, what's its ability? I, I don't even remember what it's called. Flower like Gift? Flower Gift, yeah. Yeah, giving that 1.5 attack boost and that 1.5 special attack boost to its partner. So that's, that's going to be interesting to see. That's going to be an interesting thing to see. Um, and we go on with Jellicent retreating from Yamamoto's side, switching in a Metagross. Lyford faking out the Amoongus, making it flinch and unable to move this turn. And Breloom comes out with the Spore onto Metagross. Pretty solid turn so far for, for Devon, for Maryland. But the Lum wakes it up. That That kind of sucks, but at the same time... I mean, I expect that maybe it's some sort of swagger strategy. What do you think, Scott? Yeah, I mean, I would expect to see it. At the very least, it's probably good information for him just to get the you know, figure out where the Lum is. Is he still technically has to worry about Chestoberry? But uh, I, I think when you're using Braylon, one of the important parts of the first game is figuring out where that Lumberry is so you can start playing around it. And he doesn't have to guess now. He knows that's where the Lum is. At least for game one, it's taken care of. And uh, I guess he can play from there. Uh, of course, the big worry now is that... Uh, Amoongus is free to Rage Powder for a turn, so Metagross is going to get a free attack here, and he's going to have to you know, find a way to play around that. Uh, I guess the, the obvious play on Hiroshi's end would be to Rage Powder and fire his Zen Headbutt off, although he'll probably have to take a Spore for it, and Maryland has no reason just to give him the play, I guess. You know, he could Swagger Amoongus or Switch, or so he has several plays here. and it just, It's harder to predict, uh, I guess, Maryland's end, because I have no idea what exactly uh, like Cherim and Licky Licky and that sort of thing are likely to be doing here. Yeah, what a match to come down to decide the uh, whole friendly, I guess, the two stars of the, uh, I guess, nation's Pokemon scene. Maryland being very popular in America and Hiroshi being very popular in Japan, of course. <sighs> we wait now. Um, Maryland taking his time to make some decisions, and it's a pretty big turn right now, I'd say. I mean, it's definitely a tough decision, like, Usually that Lumberry, you usually see it on the Amoongus, but now what item do you think can be on that Amoongus? I mean, I'd have to guess it's a healing item, but I guess it could technically still be Chesto. Yeah, so Amoongus coming out with the Rage Powder, and Lyperd tricking... tricks away its Dive Ball for a Chesto Berry from the Amoongus, and Breloom spores the Amoongus and puts it to sleep. That was a pretty interesting move. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of Zen popped headbutt. Like a yeah, Zen Headbutt coming out onto the Breloom from the Metagross and knocks out the Breloom. What do you think, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I, I can't believe, uh, I mean, one of the uh, the trademark Maryland gimmicks this year was tricking Master Ball at people. So uh, I, I'm pretty excited by the fact he managed to use the, the trick ball thing to actually do something productive. Like, it was actually a really good play. He got the uh, Lumber, or the uh, Chesterberry off of there. Like, that was... How did that just work? <laughs> that was a uh, 
that was a pretty clutch move. I mean, maybe he saw it coming. Maybe he knew he was like, oh, I see that chesto. I am not gonna let you uh, rest off from this spore that I'm throwing onto you. I mean, so he must that... have, right? I mean, oh my god, I think that was the most brilliant use of a dive ball in Pokemon history. Marilyn's gimmick pays off this round. <laughs> <laughs> this match has already exceeded my expectations. Oh man, uh, he actually ends up in a good spot here too, uh, even though it's uh, three four. Uh, he does get nine tails out against two Pokemon who really would prefer not to be set on fire. I mean, I, I mean, I guess most Pokemon would probably prefer not to be set on fire, but like these two in particular are quite flammable. So, good position <laughs> for Maryland here. Yeah, sending in that nine tails to replace his fallen Breloom brings out the Drought, and well, yep, against two fire weak Pokemon, that is advantageous for Maryland. Yeah, I mean, I'm still I'm curious what the uh, the last is in Maryland side. I mean, not a whole lot of offensive pressure from uh, Lifeheart here, although. Uh, I guess if nothing else, there's always the swagger option if he's got it. Swagger is a great move, no matter where you are, especially in Japan. One other thing about that trick, now that Amoongus cannot spore the, uh, the, the Lipard, so that, that pays dividends to both his offensive spore and protecting himself from future spores to come. So... I can't believe you're saying this right now. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm impressed and frightened all at once. And out comes Cherim for the uh, for replacing the the Lipard, and Flower Gift activates, and Cherim transforms into its beautiful flower self. It blossoms. Metagross retreats for Jellison, and it's a revolving door of Pokemon as Amoongus also switches out. Definitely does not want to take on this. Uh, I guess this uh, weak thing, this weakness to fire and foul play comes out from Ninetales dealing a little less than half to Jellicent. So this is not the usual Ninetales that we're used to seeing where it's like overheat. Well, I'm just excited to learn that Ninetales apparently learns uh, foul play. So I can't say I went home thing. Uh, yeah. I, the, the, the Cherim switch is actually really good too. Uh, he gets the grass Pokemon out uh, as two water Pokemon being switched too, which... Uh, it's really bright there, and the special defense boost will help out Ninetales here. Uh, so if it has a grass move, he's actually in a really good position here. Uh, that was a pretty smart play, and I mean, uh, we commented before that Breloom would be really helpful, but he does have a second grass Pokemon here to help him deal with uh, the two water types. So between Ninetales being able to burn Amoongus and uh, Metagross down, and Cherim here to take out the water Pokemon, uh, Merlin's got himself in a pretty good position. Cherim definitely paying dividends. It looks so pretty, too. I mean, we've got such graceful Pokemon out on the field right now. we got Ninetales, the pink Jellicent, and the Blossom Cherim. I mean, what more can you expect from this match? <laughs> it's the most fabulous Pokemon battle I've ever seen. If only Ninetales is shiny. Like, you know, like, I guess it's silver if it's shiny, but it's like a pink Ninetales. Like, if someone could get out there with some spray paint, it'd be perfect. Although, I mean, <laughs> I guess it kind of it matches Cherim's, like, the yellow thing on Cherim, so, like, they all go together pretty well. I'm a fan of this battle. We got our Feng Shui going on here. Yeah, Feng Scott, who do, you think has, who do you think has an advantage right now? I mean, I, mean I, I love Maryland's spot. Like, as long as he's got a grass move on Ninetales, which I don't want to predict because um, we just saw foul play, so I don't want to make assumptions. But I mean, assuming he's got a grass move, he's in a pretty good spot. And even if he doesn't, like uh, another foul play on Jealous and uh, a grass move from Cherim on to Gastrodon, keep him in a great spot. Uh, Maryland's kind of in a rough spot, because even if he wants to go on the offensive here, we've got Drought lowering the water damage, so uh, as long as Gastron doesn't get to fire some Earth Powers for free here, Maryland's in a really nice spot. Yeah, that uh, special defense boost, and I might put some money on the fact that this Ninetales might be physical. I mean, foul play coming out, and uh, flower gift boosting attack, you never know. Yeah, I mean, you'd think so, right? I mean, that would make it make more sense. Uh, I, I guess uh, Ninetales is wishing right now it was a Groudon instead, since the synergy makes a little more sense there. But, hey, what the heck? Yeah, Groudon was definitely a great partner for Cherim back in 2010, but it, I only saw it once at the uh, Junior's Finals, actually. I wish people had manned up and used it. Just, you know, come on, it's Cherim. you got to use Cherim. What else are you going to get a chance to do this other than right now, apparently? Uh, I'm definitely not checking Bulbapedia to find out what physical attacks Ninetales learns because I already knew all of them. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how much it does or how much like attack it even has, but I mean, 1.5 is actually a pretty significant boost to any Pokemon's attack stat. It's like a choice ban right there. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, the, the physical move pool doesn't seem like it's super impressive here, but better than nothing. 
Yeah, we have Jellison retreating now. After seeing that foul play come out, he's probably a bit scared. Amoongus comes out to replace it, and Ninetales with the Protect. Protecting itself from any damage, and Cherim fires off a Seed Bomb off to Gastrodon. That Rindo Berry trying to weaken the damage a bit. And Gastrodon's health slowly goes down, and that is a one-hit knockout. That Rindo Berry didn't do anything, and Gastrodon goes down, and Life Orb. Life Orb Cherim. Man, Life Orb Cherim, man, that's bloodthirsty. This Cherim doesn't care. I mean, it's try it's acting like it's just there to support Ninetales, but it wants to be the hero. It's going to knock out everybody. You know, I never thought I'd ever see the day where I get to say Cherim gets that one-hit knockout. <laughs> Through the through the Rindoberry too. It's oh my gosh. I mean, I guess that's one thing about Rindoberry Gastrodon though is it you, know, you use the Rindoberry to protect yourself from like random hidden power grasses, not so much you know, like uh, stab boosted grass attacks. But uh, man, Cherim going to town. We got a three three game here with a sleeping Amoongus. Stab life orb, uh, flower gift. Yep, we've seen it all today, guys. <laughs> I don't know how uh, Roshi gets out of this one too. I think Marilyn has the first game. I mean, unless he's using like a fire attack a li or a fire attack list nine tails. Like I, I don't know what you do. You've got two Pokemon that are weak to fire, and then Jellison, who's just going to get swatted by Cherim, you know, that beast. Next time it tries to come out, yeah, uh, Yamamoto with just Amoongus and Metagross, who both don't like facing off against this nine tails. And that Jellicent probably will also fall to another Seed Bomb, so we'll see what happens here. In the meantime, I definitely didn't look up Ninetales' stats on Bulbapedia. Uh, apparently, the attack is about 128 is the actual value, um, unless it's adamant. And as far as attacks, uh, Flare Bits, Flame Charge, Dig. Dig. Uh, Metagross Secret comes out to places. What else is there? Secret Power. Uh... Natural Gift? Oh, Tail Slap. That's a good one. <laughs> I think Tail Slap from Nine Tails should hit nine times. I think it should. Look at all those tails. Like, oh man. This, we figured the strategy out, I'm pretty sure. Oh, Iron Tail, another tail move. <laughs> Iron Tail? When Giga Impact seems like one of the better options, you know your move pool is really awesome. <laughs> um, That Flare Blitz, actually, I mean... The Flare Blitz will do a ton. I'm just, uh, I'm curious. I'm assuming it's Flare Blitz. I'm just, it's another slot that is like, what the heck could you be using, Ninetales? Oh, that's Zen Headbutt. That's a good one. Pick that one. Zen Headbutt for those pesky Conk Elders in the metagame. <laughs> Man, I bet you, like, boosted Flare Blitz. I'd probably just one shot Conk Elders. Screw that. Like, you don't even need another move. <laughs> well, Marilyn, right now, trying to decide what he wants to do while his Pokemon are just sitting there so pretty, oh so pretty. Yeah, I definitely think this was the right move uh, by Yamamoto to send out Metagross here. At least make uh, Marilyn make a decision here. You don't want to just give him two free knockouts where he can split the attacks and use the fire moves on the Amoongus and the grass moves on the Jellicent. So at least this way he has to think. Uh, Cherub's another Pokemon where I definitely know all of the moves it can learn for sure. Uh, but uh, I guess one moment we're having physical nine tails is uh, it makes things a little bit trickier since uh, you, know, you lose the spread move option to make this a little bit safer. Yeah. I, I really just want to see nine tails blow something up though is what I want. <laughs> uh, does it get does it get a uh, nature power? Because nature power becomes earthquake, I believe, in uh, Wi-Fi battles. It does, but I don't think I see it here. Cherim opting to protect this turn, not going to risk losing the precious Cherim this turn. And Metagross protects as well, trying to maybe bait out a Flare Blitz. And there, there's the Flare Blitz. And into the Metagross, and Amoongus spends his turn taking a nap. Yeah, it makes sense there. I mean, uh, I guess that's the play I was expecting. You know, you send Metagross up to try to bait the Protect, kill a turn of that sleep. Uh, Marilyn does fall for the bait there, but... Now you've got a much more difficult turn here where there's only a 50% chance of protecting, so you have to expose your Metagross here and basically give it up for free or uh, risk getting a double knockout here if Marilyn splits targets and uh, yeah. Jellicent comes back to play. Yeah, that, this also gives Amoongus a chance to, to wake up this turn if he decides to Rage Powder with it as well. Yeah, I mean, that'll be a big thing too. Uh, how long this sleep lasts could definitely determine uh, whether Yamamoto has a chance of coming back or not. Now, if this is a short sleep, he's right back in the game, but if yeah, he gets another two turns of this, I can't see him coming back. Like He really needs Amoongus there to help protect his attackers, or there aren't going to be any left. 
especially since you know we've we you know it, it's a three three game, but the last for Maryland is Leipard, who doesn't have a whole lot of offensive presence in its own, but uh, could definitely finish off Jellison. So these are the two that need to get knocked out here if he wants to close out the game. Yeah, definitely. Leipard is a great supporter, but when it comes time for it to try to take on an entire team full of Pokemon, that's that comes pretty difficult. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess he just kind of has redundant coverage that way. Like he's got two Pokemon on his side that can easily knock out. Jellicent, and only one that can easily knock out these two Pokemon here, so he's got to get at least one of them down. Yeah, I think that Metagross uh, has a pretty big target on itself right now, but maybe Yamabono knows that and might try to bait out another player Blitz and maybe try to get in that Jellicent safely, but regardless, both players, this is a pretty crucial turn right here. Yeah, I'd love to know what Charm's carrying, too. Like, if it has a move that can actually do decent damage to Metagross, this turn isn't nearly as dangerous as it seems, whereas if it is just nine tails that can deal with this, uh, it's a tricky turn because in addition to having to try to deal with both of these Pokemon, the recall from Flare Blitz, if he does knock one of these two Pokemon out, it's going to be pretty serious. Do you do you know what Charm's move pool is? Uh, I'm definitely not looking it up right now. <laughs> uh, well, we know it has Seed Bomb. Uh, I'm pretty sure it gets Helping Hand, but... Yeah, it does. I, I, I used it once in 2010, and I think that was the extent of what I remember from its move pool. I remember it being really garbage, and yeah, it's like, it's got natural gift. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, Razor Leaf. Razor Leaf with and that And a bunch of normal moves. Hooray! And Ninetales coming out with its own protect this turn, trying to protect itself. Amoongus goes for that rage power, but stays asleep, or maybe it was a protect as well. Nature power becoming Earthquake from Cherum. Oh boy. That does a little bit, about a third to Amoongus and 50% to Metagross, and Metagross comes out with a Zen Headbutt into Ninetales' Protect. So far, Maryland's been on point. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of looking for that move, but I didn't quite get to it. But yeah, so it does get Earthquake, essentially, which is pretty big. Uh, kind of a tricky turn now for... Uh... Uh, Yamamoto here, he doesn't want to, uh, even if uh, Amoongus wakes up now, I guess Ninetales can just swat it, and the combination of Ninetales and Cherum is, I don't know, I, getting that damage there, I can't see how Yamamoto gets out of this unless Marilyn does something really silly now. Like, uh, he, he needed a quicker wake up there. <laughs> well, Marilyn is known for doing some silly things in battle. I'm just trying to imagine, like, this, like, little flower princess thing just popping as earthquakes, though, like, I don't know. I'm going to have nightmares of this thing. It's <laughs> so small that it causes tremors in the ground. Maryland has selected his move, and Yamamoto is still trying to decide um, how he can get out of this sticky situation that he's in. I mean, do you want to be that guy that loses to Cherim? Yeah, I mean, he's probably looking up Cherim's move pool on Bulbapedia, too. I mean, really. Well, Who needs to know these things? Well, I mean, if they had if they had a uh, Shota Shota Yamamoto there, he used uh, Cherim back in 2010 for his uh, championship team, I believe, or maybe it was Santa. But the Japanese are they're no strangers to Cherim, but maybe maybe Cherim's grown out of a uh, favor in the Jap Japanese metagame. Oh man, this Pokemon gets some sick moves. See, it learns Heal Pulse, my favorite move that no one uses. <laughs> Helping hand, like you said. Uh, like every time of day based healing move, which I don't know why you'd need more than one, but it's got him. <laughs> Metagross protecting itself from this turn, and Ninetales' Flare Blitz coming out. Fire Gem onto the Amoongus, and I don't think, I don't think there's a chance that, uh, that that's going to survive that. I think you could have put like three or four Amoonguses there, and they'd all go down. Oh no, the effect spore activates and paralyzes Ninetales and Cherim. Well, that that was a lot of recoil damage, actually. But Cherim comes out with a Seed Bomb into Metagross's Protect. <clears throat> I I think that this game is uh, winding down. Yeah, I mean, as long as Cherim doesn't do anything silly here, uh, it should be able to you know smell the scent of victory here. Uh, poor Ninetales is probably not going to be quite so happy after the effect spore. Uh, which is like, it's like four strange things happen there. Okay, first of all, why does Amoongus have effect spore? And then why is Ninetales using physical moves to trigger it to begin with? Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. 
Uh, this is this is definitely metagame changing right now. Maybe next thing you know, if X4 Amoongus becomes the more popular Amoongus choice. Yeah, I mean, it's a great counter to physical Ninetales here. I mean, now uh, Ninetales in a manageable position. Amoongus did get some uh, vengeance, I guess, paralyzing Ninetales before it was knocked out. So, I mean, it paid its dividends. Did more than Regenerator would have. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was a one-hit knockout, so... There was no chance for... I mean, Amoongus probably could have switched into Jellison, but... Yeah. I'd like to see Jellison try and take a Sun Fire Gem boosted Flare Blitz. Flower Gift boosted, too. Like, there's so many boosts that, like, I'm losing track of them all. Like, bring it on, Jellison. Let's see what you can do. Times 1.5 for that Fire Gem. Times 1.5 for the Sun. Uh... I think we'd have 1.5 Jellison Corpse litt littering the ground after that move. <laughs> uh, times 1.5 for the Flower Gift, and... Yeah, that's like times three point something, I believe, and that's that's a pretty strong boost. Oh, stab too, with a one point five. So you can't stop this. It's a monster. I think I think I think it's hitting things for about four times. So it's like hitting a Garchomp with the Ice Beam from Cresselia. <laughs> Plus, I mean, you gotta keep in mind too, it's like base one twenty to begin with. It's not like you're just you know multiplying some weak move. It's uh, you know among the best of the one hundred percent accurate moves in the game. And and a chance to burn. Can't forget about that. What a monster! Why is it everyone using this? <laughs> I think I think Maryland might be uh, affecting the regional scene right now. I mean, how many charms are you going to prepare for now, Scott? I don't know. I mean, this is going number one on my threat list right now. <laughs> Charum, same here. Same here. Uh, as soon as I look it up in the Pokedex to figure out what it is, it's going. <laughs> uh, Maryland has locked in his moves, awaiting Yamamoto's move now. And I think it's pretty wrapped up right now. I mean, he too was looking this up in his Pokedex, but uh, hopefully uh, he'll figure it out soon and find yeah. some weed killer for game two, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. What do you think Yamamoto is going to have to do to adjust in into uh, game, game two to try to get into this match a bit more? And Ninetales goes for that Protect, and Nature Power comes out with that Earthquake again. So that's going to deal some damage. So Scott, what do you think Yamamoto is going to have to do to uh? I mean, if adjust... I was Yamamoto, um, I'd probably seriously consider um having some uh network trouble and pulling out the plug of my router because you can't stop the beast that is Cherim, and uh, I just I wouldn't even try. And Jellison sets up a trick room, and that is that should be a wrap. Nine Tails will now underspeed everything unless that Jellison has an Iron Ball. But yeah, Cherim. Definitely a threat. Scott, did you see anything on Yamamoto's team that could possibly help out with this matchup right now? Yeah, I'm eager to see that preview again because I can't remember the other two Pokemon. But uh, I, I think I mentioned it a few times. It seemed like uh, Maryland had nine tails who could handle a bunch of Pokemon that were you know, kind of like his counters to water Pokemon's counters. And then he had two grass Pokemon to deal with the water Pokemon. And he's going to have to figure out a way to get around that because the combination of nine tails and the two grass types seems to have a really positive matchup with everything that uh, Yamamoto brought that game. So uh, if he wants to win, he's going to have to pick his other two Pokemon. I know one of them was Cloyster, who doesn't particularly seem like something that's going to be very helpful here. So uh, hopefully for here, Yamamoto, the last Pokemon, is something that is going to be a little bit more useful here. Or we could have another uh, you know, game full of devastating destruction caused by Cherim. I, I believe his last Pokemon was uh, Hydreigon, Hydreigon if, I, if I recall correctly. I mean, that could be a good pick. I mean... It's not fantastic, but it should be able to take damage pretty well from both the grass and fire type Pokemon that Maryland was using that game. Uh, he's gonna have to be careful around Breloom, obviously, but uh, I don't know. I think it could work out. Um, that might be a good option. Yeah, definitely. Um, if that Cloyster carries a Choice Scarf, that could also be pretty threatening to uh, Maryland's team as well. I mean, a Scarf skill link. Rock Blast could do damage to Nine Tails, and that Icicle Spear is just a powerful move. Yeah, I agree. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see both of those Pokemon. I just felt like, uh, understandably, uh, Yamamoto was a little bit surprised by that uh, matchup there, and probably didn't pick the ideal Pokemon for this matchup. So, uh, hopefully, this time he makes some adjustments and makes things a little more difficult on Maryland here. Uh, it's a difficult team to match up with, though, because I mean you've got the whole Lilum thing, which is easy to get dunked by to begin with, and then you know the Sun Mode, which is strange and not something people are used to countering. And we have to remember he does still have Sableye and uh, Licky Licky in the back, which have some more shenanigans. So. 
you know, if you just prepare for only those Pokemon, uh, you might get surprised by the other two. So uh, this is probably a really frustrating team to be down 1-0 against because, you know, anything could happen at any moment here. Yeah, and uh, going back to team preview, yeah, we were right. Metagross, Gastrodon, uh, Cloyster, Jellicent, Hydreigon, and Amoongus for Yamamoto's side. So I kind of want to see Yamamoto try to adjust to this, uh, I guess I'll call it uh, Chair Tails. Chair Tails, yeah, Chair Tails for the Chair of Nine Tails and for the Lyloom. So we'll just have to see how he adjusts during this uh, next game. I mean, I think he was fairly close to that game. Like, Hydra, like is it, uh, Tri- Hydreigon's got to go in. Uh, I think Cloyster's a good pick, too. Uh, I thought, even though it didn't do much there, uh, Amoongus is probably a good choice, and maybe Metagross, too, just to keep the um, uh, the sleep-resisting berries. Just to you know, kind of slow Breloom down a bit, because it's still... Um, the other two Pokemon I mentioned are both weak to Breloom's Mach Punch, so I, I feel like it's a good combination there, but... And Marilyn giving us a little peek at the uh, Liper there. Interesting. Um, I definitely don't think that Yam- Yam- Yamamoto should bring Gastron, seeing as how it did not work out at all for him last game at all. Yeah, I don't really like uh, either it or Jellicent very much here. Uh, I think Gastron's probably the worst option, just because uh, even though it would wall nine tails decently well, um, it's slower than everything in Marilyn's team. And given that he has two grass Pokemon, uh, I guess that alone, like the odds of actually getting anything off with Gastrodon are very low since they can both knock it out through its Rindo Berry. Um, Gastrodon, I think I mentioned in a previous match, it's just a Pokemon I think is probably not very good. And um, this is one of the worst Gastrodon matches I can see, I've can i seen. Um, but that also makes things a lot trickier for Yamamoto because I think he's used to using Jellicent and Gastrodon most games. And uh, Maryland's team really forces him off of that. Like if he wants to win, he's going to have to adjust and kind of use the other Pokemon here, which might make things a little bit more challenging for him than he's used to them being. Yeah, that, that seed bomb probably took a lot of people by surprise, getting that uh, one-hit knockout through the Rindo Berry on Gastron, which is pretty well-known for being a decently bulky Pokemon. <clears throat> we had uh, Marilyn earlier showing off again his uh, his Lipard, so I think... You think... You think... You think uh, Maryland's going to make any adjustments to his team? Maybe see that Sableye or that Licky Licky? I mean, I wish I knew their sets. Um, I, I assume that it's most likely a faint explosion shenanigan. So uh, I think that might actually be a decent call here. Uh, there are quite a few Pokemon on uh, Yamamoto's team that can make that strategy not quite so effective. Um, he does have the Steel type in Metagross, a Ghost type in Jellicent, and a very high defense Pokemon in Cloyster. So, I mean, I, I guess I could understand him not wanting to do that. Uh, which is a shame because Explosion is so much fun to watch, but I feel like the odds of it actually being worth it in this matchup are not very high, uh, especially because uh, I don't know what the rest of this Sableye's moveset is, but usually a Will-O-Wisp is the other primary benefit of bringing Sableye, and Metagross we've seen the Lumberry on already, so he's going to have to burn through that before he can uh, burn Metagross, which seems unlikely, so I I guess unless he got really... He was very fortunate about the Pokemon that Yamamoto chose to bring, uh, I can't imagine the explosion shenanigan being too useful. So the the four we saw last game are likely to be his best options here. Yeah, definitely can't forget about that really, really clutch uh, trick dive ball that we saw on turn two last game. So that definitely paid its dividends. I expect to see some more dive balls being exchanged during this match, during this game. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I was still uh, one of the most, maybe the single best play we've seen all night, actually, uh, both because, you know, it's cool that he had the dive ball and that he actually used it in such an effective way. Like, he stole an item in a way that was very helpful to him <laughs> and took an item away just as it was needed. Like, it was perfect. Um, which is just mind-blowing to me. Can, can we get a YouTube highlight of that? Can we just, like, extract that video and just upload it to YouTube with the highlight? <laughs> yeah, I think we need to telestrate this and just draw some <laughs> yellow lines. Like, the dive ball starts here, then it goes over there. Overlay some more commentary. Yep, here you can see uh, Maryland going for that trick dive ball strategy again. <laughs> uh, I, 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 it's so funny to me because like I've been at regionals where he did the trick master ball thing and just like, oh Maryland, you're so silly. But no, apparently this is like <laughs> sick rogue strategies that none of us took seriously. Like man, I, he was I re- right all along. I remember watching that replay 
at a regional live, and I was just like, man, I wonder if that other guy is like, man, does Master Ball have some sort of secondary effect when it's on when it's equipped with something? <laughs> It's all part of the troll, man. You got Dive Ball coming out. You got Cherim. You got Physical Nine Tails. Like, what the heck is going on in this match? Like, how do you play against this? I remember uh, I was I was there for a bit of the team building process for Maryland, and I remember that one of the requirements of Maryland's team was that he had he was able to trick some silly item away. So it, I mean, it's working out. Yeah, I love the pun too of giving a uh, Lipard the dive ball there for the dive cat joke. That was that was clever. <laughs> Good job, guys. Appreciate your wit. Uh, for those of you who are unaware of dive cats, it is a gimmick team where uh, I, I guess Scott, you probably have more experience with it. I've only seen it happen once. You've probably seen it like more times. Yeah, I fought it a few times, and uh, I know I talked to Paul about it a lot because he gave it to. Uh, May Kiri for one of her events, but uh, I mean, you, you use a, a Lipard and a Purloin with just assist and the items that make them move last every turn. I mean, you give them teammates that have moves like dive, um, which is what you know the namesake is, and fly and that sort of shenanigans and shadow force, uh, which gives you the much cooler sounding shadow cats, uh, which I'm pretty sure is like the villains from Thundercats, probably. Uh, but anyway, uh, and you just use assist every turn. So you always go first because you're doing prankster assist. And then the lagging tail makes the second part of dive, etc. always go last. So if your opponent doesn't have a move like, uh, I guess, like a faster prankster or a prankster move or a priority move, you just automatically win because they can never hit you. So annoying tactic doesn't work against most prepared teams. But um, yeah, funny enough to give Lipard the dive ball for sure. Yep, an homage to a gimmick. I guess you could call it gimmickception. Anyways, the uh, second battle right now, after Maryland took the first one, up 1-0 is about to start. As we go to the white screen and wait for it to load. Um, the Yamamoto sends out Hydreigon and Metagross, adjusting a little bit so far from the lead, and Maryland sends out the Lyloon combo, and we got some Poke Stars in the house. Scott, what do you think about the adjustments so far? I'm, I'm a little bummed because this looks like an actual Pokemon battle. You've got like the very standard Metagross Hydreigon lead, which uh, we saw a lot of with Ray's World's team in 2012, and I guess it's just kind of like the face of that year's metagame. And then Lyloon, which is like gimmicky, but you know, it's definitely actually a thing. I don't know. I mean, there, I could, there's decisively fewer Cherims in this battle so far than I would prefer. But um, I think this is a tenuous first turn for Maryland here. Uh, he's got to be careful. There's two Pokemon who can swap Breloom really easily here. And we did see in the first game it does not have Focus Sash. So it's going to want to be really careful on this one. And it's also two Pokemon who don't get annoyed all that much by Lipard. So I do like the lead choices by... Uh, Yamamoto here, and I'm not completely sure I would play this one if I was Maryland. I guess pending what's in the back, um, and I guess pending the rest of Lipard's moves around, uh, the rest of Lipard's moves as well. Yeah, both Pokemon definitely a threat to the uh, Breloom. Uh, Breloom's kind of sandwiched in between Hydreigon and Metagross in the speed tiers. Maryland has submitted his move, and now we just await Yamamoto's move. Um, I mean, what are some possible moves that could happen right now? I mean, Scott. What do, you, what do you think might happen? I mean, I'm turn? curious. Um, You've got the fighting Pokemon out there, so I mean, you could hope that Yamamoto's afraid of the threat of Mach Punch and try to do something funny like tricking the uh, Lumberry off of Metagross and sporing it, but I feel like it's not likely the same trick will work twice here. Um, there's also the possibility that he just double protects to avoid fake out here, but you got to figure if he was going to do that, he would have entered it already. Um, so I'm assuming he's going to try to do something cool here. Um, there's also the option of just actually taking the like mock punch and the fake out here to get some damage on the board, though it's likely it's going to wind up in losing Breloom a little bit too quickly. Yeah, the the problem with the double protect though from Yamamoto side yeah, is so that yeah, you're threatening the encore. Yeah, because Lipard does get encore unlike Sableye. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess uh, I don't know why I was. It's five a.m. here, um, but <laughs> but I mean, I guess even then, I, I I don't mind protecting in front of Lipard that much because. Like, unless you lose the mind game really hard, typically you're wasting Lipard's turn encoring, or it's just going to assume you're not going to let it encore and play as though you're not you're going to switch anyway. So I don't think it's always that big of a threat. Uh, though I guess d doubling it would be pretty dangerous, especially with yeah. uh, Braylon looming down on you because 
uh, you have to worry about it just getting off the free attack here and taking you up pretty easily. Yeah, don't want to get locked into both Pokemon protecting because that opens up a door for Lyper to encore the faster Hydreigon. And, well, I mean, I guess Breloom would pour into a Lum, but that also burns the item, which is kind of a decent accomplishment for a turn. I'm curious what Breloom's holding, too, if it uh, isn't Sash. Yeah, me uh, too. Um, what, like are, what are popular item choices for Breloom? So I mean, usually if it's not using Sash, use uh, Life Arbor Fighting Gem to add the damage and not have to worry about Sandstorm damage. Uh, on this team, I would definitely be using Focus Sash just because you have... Uh, you know, sun, so you can turn sand off. So it seems like a pretty good situation to try to use uh, the sash in. But since he's not, I, I'd assume it's an offensive item. And because of that, uh, he's probably threatening the one-hit KO on Hydreigon here. And uh, I would almost wish I had shown that already if I was Marilyn, just because it would add a little extra fear in the Hydreigon and make it easier to open up that trick spore play. And the turn starts with Lyperd faking out the Metagross. And that Breloom outspeeds Hydreigon and spores it. Well, that so, answers that question, doesn't it? Hydreigon, I, I am just off today. That, that Hydreigon was slower. But Hydreigon takes a nap, and Metagross flinches. So turn one, Marilyn probably took that turn with ease. Yeah, barring something ridiculous here, that is a choice scarf on Breloom. So, no offensive item there, and a nice spot for him to be in. Uh, if I'm Metagross here, I definitely choose to protect and not open myself up to getting tricked and spored, which would be embarrassing two games in a row. <laughs> uh, and Marilyn may want to think about just... He's going to make at least one switch here, probably, I think. Um, unless he thinks he's going to get that uh, avenue open to him, just because you, you've got to start turning these sleeps into something. You know, Hydreigon's going to... I already got one turn of sleep down uh, at no cost, which is one of the things I don't like very much about Scarf Breloom. So it already is starting to have the chance of waking up, and if you just leave it sitting there, it's just going to wake up and torch Breloom. So got to start converting this into off. Yeah, definitely don't want to be the victim of a gimmick twice. Um, that Scarf Breloom, I I have never... That's so... Just, I, think, I don't think people are used to fighting a Scarf Breloom anymore. Yeah. Um, I remember Len was running it before Regionals once, but uh, not one of my favorite sets. Uh, I know that chat brought up an interesting idea, too, that you could trick Breloom's Scarf off to avoid having some of the issues it's having right now, which I think would be fairly clever, but uh, it's unlikely to get enough turns to actually pull it off. Uh, <laughs> you'd, you'd need Metagross to protect to stall here to actually succeed at that, I think, which isn't very likely. Yeah, I, I think another mode that Marilyn has is definitely that tricking away that Scarf so then Breloom can continue on with its offensive firepower which is a pretty interesting tactic that we saw a little bit of action in 2010. And Marilyn goes for the trick onto Metagross, I believe. Yes, the uh, dive ball for the Lumberry exchange <laughs> again. And the Spore comes out onto Metagross. Both Pokemon on the other side are taking a nap as of that Spore. And Hydreigon stays asleep. Well, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I called it, but I didn't think that, you know, fool me once and fool me twice there. And uh, he fell for the same trick twice in one series. They can't have that happen. <laughs> <laughs> dive balls. <laughs> I mean, I guess the dive ball trick thing is uh, really not something that we've been trained to expect. But I mean, even if it was a normal light part, you got to worry about the swagger uh, spore thing. Uh, ugh. I think I think Yamamoto right now is hoping that he has a sticky hold gastrid on instead of a storm drain. <laughs> Seriously. Um, well, I can't believe we've seen this a second time in one series. Uh, I guess uh, we're still in the same position we were before, though. Uh, Marilyn needs to start turning these uh, clever tactics into some offense here because, well, he's hilariously got... Uh, Yamamoto's Pokemon sleeping. Uh, he hasn't actually inflicted any damage yet, and the odds are a pretty good Hydreigon will wake up this turn. He's got it down to a 50-50. So, um, Breloom is probably going to want to get out of there unless uh, he really wants to gamble and hope he can uh, us wake up this turn. I would definitely flee if I was him personally, though. Yeah, flee. Hydreigon with that chance to wake up, and um, even if... Breloom wants to go on the offensive. He'd have to take either a turn to switch or a turn to trick off that choice scarf. 
where he'd spore into two already sleeping Pokemon this turn. So it's kind of a sticky situation for uh, Maryland. Yeah, I mean, he's already got two turns of sleep on Hydreigon and one on Metagross and zero damage. So the odds are actually better that you'll, he'll take more damage than he can give out this turn unless he's got some clever tricks we haven't seen yet. Well, he did get off that fake out damage. So that is, that is a maybe five HP of damage. Hey, man, every point counts. That's true. Uh, Breloom comes out this turn, being replaced by that oh-so-pretty Ninetales, bringing out the uh, sun from Drought. And it's a double switch again, and Lipard switches out for the other oh-so-pretty Cherum. So here it is, Chairtails, once again, in the sun. <clears throat> And there is the transformation to activate Flower Gift, or I guess in some ways Flower Gift activates the transformation. Hydreigon stays asleep, and Metagross stays asleep as well. These are tired Pokemon. It is pretty late for everybody. They oh, man, I know how they feel. <laughs> uh, tough spot for Yamamoto, though, because I, mean, I guess we, we don't have any confirmation that either of these Pokemon have a reasonable way to do damage to Hydreigon yet. Though I'm thinking that Flare Blitz will probably almost knock it out on its own uh, with all those multipliers there. At the very least, they'll chunk it really hard. Uh, Metagross is in a tough spot here. Uh, you don't want to switch if you're either of these Pokemon because you're going to have to sleep all those turns again. And since Hydreigon got a max turn sleep here and Metagross may do the same thing, uh, it's really going to want to uh, try to stay in here. But I don't... I just... I wish I knew these calcs a little bit better, I guess. Uh, I I'm wondering if, a, especially if Helping Hand is available, if a boosted Flare Blitz wouldn't just knock Hydreigon out, though, which would be pretty hilarious to see. I, I really want to see this uh, this uh, calc as well and see if this Flare Blitz does get the one-hit knockout in the sun with the gem, with stab, with flower gift, and if it does, expect to see this combo more at regionals. Yeah, cause I feel like Hydreigon is the one thing that really needs to get removed here on uh, Yamamoto's team. Uh, I mean, Metagross is a pain, but I guess... Uh, I feel like Hydreigon is the the bigger threat here just because it's faster than everything, so it's really limiting what Maryland can do. Uh, he also has the option of trying to bring uh, Breloom back in uh, to deal with it. And sum presumably a Scarf Low Sweep will deal with it pretty nicely too. But uh, in the meantime, Flare Bliss will be cooler. Yeah, Hydreigon is going to wake up this turn regardless, because this is, that was his third turn of sleep. So it all comes down to what Maryland does, and see if this Flare Blitz can get that one-hit knockout. Yeah, it looks like uh, it's likely that he does go with the Flare Blitz option. Uh, he does need Helping Hand to get it, but here's hoping. You ran the calc? Zach ran the calc. Okay. I was um... thinking Helping Hand was probably needed there, so... Well, Too that's, bad, just, but... that's just another multiplier added on to the list of multipliers. Ninetales is a Pokemon of many multipliers. Ninetales went home to math school because it was mad that no one was picking it, so <laughs> it studied hard, hit the books. Just like you all should, kids, stay in school. Stay in school. Um, school's important, so don't drop out. That's Nugget Bridges' uh, public service announcement of the day, night, wherever you may be. Morning, wherever you may be. Uh, Maryland has submitted his moves, and now we just wait Yamamoto's moves. One of the slower-paced Pokemon battles I've seen, but I, it just takes it gives everyone an extra moment to relish the ridiculousness of Ninetales and Cherim looming down and it being a difficult enough decision for his opponent that you have to actually, actually have to think about it. I mean, who would have thought? Is is Yamamoto in the uh, room with all the other Japanese players from the friendly? I have no idea, but I doubt it. Well, I assume that room is going nuts right now. I think the entire internet should be going nuts right now. I know their stream went from like 150 viewers to like 1,000 as soon as Yamamoto got on. So uh, <laughs> lots of people are enjoying the terror of uh, Cherim right now, which uh, makes it that much better. For all we know, Maryland could be determining the uh, entire Japanese metagame upcoming. So prepare for Next this team, season, guys. Yeah, nothing but sun. Like, they're going to replace their Landruses and their Caselias with Ninetales and Cherim. Who needs Conkledur that hits like a truck when you got Ninetales hitting like a truck with Cherim? The revolution has begun! <laughs> yep. You've seen it here first on Nugget Bridge, guys. And this Care is why you tales. stay in. Yeah. I know everyone's like, oh man, I'm tired. It's like almost five in the morning. No, this is why you keep watching, because otherwise you miss Ninetales and Cherim. The most important and most <laughs> exciting match of the night. Yeah. Then we may add, 
decides the winner of the match. Uh, it's going to get lost in the ridiculous of this, but it is tied at three with the uh, USA and Japan here. So the winner of this match will also bring it out home for their country. For uh, those of you joining us just recently, we've been streaming ever since uh, 6 Pacific Daylight Savings Time. So that was about maybe seven hours ago or something like that. So it's been there's been a lot of Pokemon tonight, and yeah. Scott, yeah, you've been I'm, up for most of it, haven't you? Yeah, I've been up, I mean, I was on for, I think, all but one match, so I guess we didn't have commentary for a bit, but I was still around, so yeah. I've been here since 9 my time, and it's now 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, can't wait to take a go to sleep after this, actually. Like and my we're... dragon in Metagross, I'm, sleep, <laughs> I'm ready to sleep for the maximum amount of turns. We're, we're still awaiting Yamamoto's uh, inputs right now, so just bear with us for a few more minutes or moments. Yeah, Yamamoto may also be sleeping for the maximum amount of turns. You know, it's like Braylon's power is so great that it has leaked through the DS and infected him in real life. So uh... I, I think they, they're just still in shock that this team is here <laughs> and that it is doing work on them right now. So... I am also in shock, uh, but good shock, you know, like surprise party shock. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about how stale the metagame has been ever since. Uh, I mean, we've been playing this metagame, of course, for about a season now, so yeah, uh, a lot of Pokemon to become... too, because yeah. uh, very similar last year. But I mean, we saw Raikou win today. We saw Ray's new Mel team win today. Like, man, this is my kind of metagame. Yeah, so another Pokemon, Metagross stays asleep, trying to wake up in the Protect, and Flare Blitz comes out onto Metagross, and down it goes. One hit knockout from that boosted Flare Blitz, and taking about 60 hit points of damage from that recoil, and Hydreigon wakes up and fires off a sun-boosted flamethrower onto Cherum, and Cherum goes down. Oh no! Cherum goes down, no! and Hydreigon loses some of its hit points from the Life Orb recoil. So, a thorn in Yamamoto's side. Cherum is now been taken out. I'm what just do you, really what disappointed do you think? that uh, Nine Tails didn't flare blitz it now because I think it gets it no matter what after the Life Orb recoil. Ah, Nine Tails, you your moment. You wasted <laughs> Nine it. Nine Tails, you choked. Uh, but... Definitely the better play by Maryland to not get Metagross there, though, Bob. Jokes aside, um, unless he does have Helping Hand uh, Flare Blitz available, um, yeah, he gets the for sure knockout there. Doesn't risk Metagross waking up and puts himself in a better position here to uh, manage Hydreigon with Flypart coming back out here. Yeah, and Amoongus coming in to replace the fallen Metagross for Yamamoto, and Flypart comes in to replace the fallen Cherum, and now that. Lipard is there to threaten, and um, Ninetales, of course, is always threatening with the sun and Flare Blitz, and yeah. Scott, what do you think of the uh, turn of events for both sides? I mean, uh, I mean it's always uh, a bummer to see Cherim go down here, but it does look like uh, um, Yamamoto's decided to lay off the water Pokemon a bit this time. Uh, he must still have one because he has three, so hard to pick zero of them. But uh, we do see the other Pokemon that he has here, uh, which makes things a little bit easier for Marilyn to figure out here. Uh, he knows he's got a last Pokemon water Pokemon to deal with. He's got Breloom in the back to handle that. So if he can figure out a way just to neutralize the four Pokemon in the field right now, he'll be okay. Um, his fake, he's got the fake out pressure from Lipard here, which will at least slow Hydreigon down a little bit. And uh, Amoongus is likely not going to want to stay in and just take the Flare Blitz, though there's some risk to uh, assuming that that will be the case. Uh, it's worth keeping in mind, too, that Lipard inexplicably has the Lumberry. It's still from Metagross still, so it can't be slept just yet. But uh, Ninetales will not be so lucky if Amoongus <laughs> is cheeky enough to stay out against it. That that trick from the first or the second turn still paying dividends for for Maryland, and we'll see if Yamamoto actually remembers if that Lipard has that lumberry. I'm really hoping he doesn't, just because that'd be like the the greatest explanation point in this game we could get. But uh, <laughs> what? Uh, Amoongus opting to protect itself this turn from an oncoming attack. And Lipard comes out with the fake out onto the Amoongus Protect, and Flare Blitz comes out hitting the Hydreigon. Not very effective. Doing about a 
third, less than a third maybe, leaving it at slightly above half health, and the Draco Meteor comes down in pound nine tails for the knockout. A little daring not to fake out the Hydreigon there. Um, I don't know if there's too much of benefit of that, just because uh, it wasn't too likely that Amoongus would choose to stay in there, but he does get some more damage on it with the Life Orb there. Yeah. Um, Breloom going to come in to replace the Fallen Ninetales, and now it is the Scarf Breloom and the Lipard, the Lumberry Lipard versus Amoongus Hydreigon and Yamamoto's unrevealed Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, that's going to make things a little more difficult here. He does know it's a water type, so he probably, in a perfect world, would like to lock into Bullet Seed, but that's not going to be an option for him here because you know, he's got to deal with Amoongus and Hydreigon also. Uh, he does have the option of trying to trick his own um, uh, Scarf away, uh, perhaps for the Lumberry, which Breloom is may want to be holding sometime soon, uh, should Amoongus choose to target it with Spore. Uh, I would not be at all surprised if we see Breloom fire off an attack on Hydreigon here and get the Lumberry tricked over to it. Um, because I guess that's the downfall here. Um, if you're a Moongus, that you have to worry about spoiling the wrong target. Uh, the safe move on uh, Yamamoto's side is just to Rage Powder here and let Hydreigon attack again. Because even with the reduced special attack, I'm sure Flamethrower would absolutely obliterate Breloom. But if you're Maryland, you've got to play for a mistake. Yeah, um, cannot spore just yet because of the, well, Moongus still has its, uh, Sleep Berry, so that is null, and don't want to get locked into it because it would take about two turns for Breloom to get back onto the offensive, so right now, definitely need to rely on that misplay. Yeah, it's worth noting, too, uh, he doesn't even really have the Encore route here, even though Amoongus just protected, because Rage Powder is a higher priority, so unless he chooses not to use, uh, Sp or, uh, unless he chooses to use support here, yeah, it's not a useful option, and we do see the Rage Powder coming. Yeah, Amoongus drawing everything away, and the trick comes out from Lipard, and that will switch the Lumberry with the Chesto Berry, so that was kind of null. And Breloom comes out with the Spore onto Amoongus, and we know that that's just going to wake up this turn. A yeah, likely mood here on, unless Lipard has Swagger and we haven't seen it, there's not an out there to that play. Yeah, Hydreigon firing off its Sun Boosted Flamethrower onto Breloom and gets the one hit knockout again. So, this game is probably over by now. Uh, what do you think Marilyn needs to do to adjust to game, to game three? I, I really liked how Yamamoto adjusted to, to the changes that he needed to make. Yeah, I do too. Um, I, like we mentioned in the pregame, a Hydreigon is definitely the answer there, and uh, it shows why. Uh, if I was him, I'd pick very similar Pokemon in Game 3. I think he's got the right matchup here. Uh, and in Maryland's case, um, I don't. I, I mean, I guess you've just got to find a way to deal with Hydreigon a little bit better, but I don't know what he has that's actually going to pull that off. Um, none of his Pokemon seem super well um, set up to deal with Hydreigon right now if Hydreigon doesn't do anything silly. I mean, he does have um, um, Breloom, who... <laughs> that's the effects for again. Uh, he Goes does to have... sleep. Oh, hey, guess what? I got a, I got a Lumberry. I got a Chestoberry. <laughs> we get one more clutch Lumber or Chestoberry play for this game. <laughs> Gotta appreciate that, right? Yeah. Uh, Hydreigon fires off its flamethrower into Lipart, and it survives with 61 HP. I was going to say, I mean, he still has to find some way to deal with that Hydreigon there. Like, other than Breloom, I don't know what all on his team can actually deal with it. They're like Ninetales doesn't have a coverage move for it. Uh, Cherim apparently doesn't have a coverage move for it. Like You almost have to just take that out at all costs and just hope you can play around it at this point. Um, the unfortunate thing is like the only like reasonable play we, we've seen that he can use to take down Hydreigon is to try to get like 10-15% on it and then um, blast away with Ninetales. But uh, giving Ninetales up too easily is actually a really bad play in this situation because uh, he does need Ninetales to help deal with Amoongus and Metagross, so uh, he, he's just got to find a way to get rid of Hydreigon without completely destroying Ninetales, I think, if he wants to get through this game. Yeah, definitely had to think back to that turn where uh, he opted to Flare Blitz the Metagross instead of the Hydreigon, and that could have been that was probably a crucial turn, actually. Yeah, I mean, that it's the safest play in theory, but uh, Hydreigon's the bigger threat here. I mean, even Cherim can help deal with Metagross some, but uh, 
Hydreigon, there just isn't a lot of answers for. I think the only thing on his team that's actually faster than it is um, uh, Nine Tails. So I, I don't, I don't, it's, I don't know if I see the answer here. I, maybe it's time for Licky Licky and uh, Sableye. I don't know. Kind, kind, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but Cherim is the key. Was the key to that battle. And once Cherim went down, it was just all downhill for uh, Maryland, actually. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I still think the fire mode is a, or the sun mode, I should say, is a good matchup with, um, is a good matchup with Yamamoto's team. He just maybe has to pick different Pokemon in the other two slots to help him deal with Hydreigon a little bit better. Yeah, and like we said, like 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 you said earlier with the the calc that uh, Zach ran, that you need the helping hand or just rely on that uh, life orb boost to the life orb recoil to finish off that Hydreigon for Maryland. So we'll see how Maryland adjusts to for Game 3. And yeah, I mean, here we see Yamamoto's team again. Uh, Metagross, Gastrodon, Cloyster, Jellicent, Hydreigon, and Amoongus. Yeah, uh, I hate to uh, cut down on the ball shenanigans, but uh, I feel like Lipard slot's probably the one that most needs to change here. Uh, I don't think we've seen its fourth move yet, but we've seen a uh, trick foul play and fake out from it. And I guess Encore is the presumable last move. Uh, I think not having Swagger makes it not a viable choice here. Uh, I just feel like it doesn't do enough without it. And uh, like anytime it gets isolated with Hydreigon there, it's just going to be a losing turn for Maryland, I think. So uh, I, I feel like that's the slot I would change up if I was him. But uh, we'll have to see how he chooses to adjust to this one. Who would you uh, replace instead of uh, Lifeheart? I mean, it's hard to know without knowing the sets. I don't know if... Um, how well Sableye and Licky Licky will function on their own. Like if they, if they're a gimmick that needs to be together, then that changes the decision, and maybe Lipard is still the best pick. Um, or maybe you have to get rid of Breloom too to keep them together. I'm not really sure. I just, um, I feel like Breloom, like because of the scarf being faster than Hydreigon, while it's holding it, um, and I, I feel like you probably need that to help deal with Hydreigon at this point. But um, I just I don't know what Lipard's adding really. Um, because like, even with helping with the spore thing, it takes so many actions with both Pokemon, uh, which prevents Maryland from switching to actually get momentum from the sleeps that it doesn't seem to be accomplishing anything. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, it is it is good support, but at the same time, it doesn't contribute anything offensively. I mean, if you're just boring, then you're just going to be putting Pokemon to sleep, and after that, you're stuck. You have to either that forces a switch or force you to try to trick off the choice scarf and then trick that choice scarf away again. So definitely that spore option is, it, it's annoying, but it is definitely easy to play around once both your Pokemon are asleep. Yeah, I mean, it just, it, it takes too many turns, I think. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a weird strategy to have this problem with, but I think a big thing just in general in VGC is that any strategy that takes, you know, more than like two or three actions to set up is usually not going to work because there's always too many things that can go wrong. And sleep is probably the biggest defender of this just because uh, there's so much RNG with it. Like there's a th there's three different turns the Pokemon can potentially wake up. And like, yeah, you've got to, you know, balance your odds against that as well as you can. And if you do get a couple of short sleeps, you're going to have a really hard time there. And the previous game, Maryland got a ton of long sleeps, right? It was, um, as we never saw anything wake up uh, any sooner than it absolutely had to. So essentially, he had perfect luck with the sleeps there, and it still didn't really work. So uh, I just feel like uh, he's going to have to deviate from what he did last game, because even with the uh, as much luck as you're going to get there, it didn't work out too well for him. Yeah, Pokemon is a very well-known game of luck. Uh, remember, were, did you watch the battle between uh, Ryuzaki versus uh, Bo... I'm trying really hard to forget about it, but uh, yes, I did have it open. Yeah, that uh, minimize, uh, that minimized drift blim who took like maybe four or five turns to actually set up actually ended up getting set up. So you never know what can happen in this game of uh, Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, a little different strategies too because once that drift blim is set up, you know, it's good for the match. Whereas Spore has to keep being applied over and over, which um, makes it a little harder to actually um, draw too much advantage from. Yeah, but definitely. I mean, still, I mean, I guess it, there's, there's RNG both ways. Uh, so um, I, I'm actually more curious, and I guess from the RNG department, to see if the Sableye does have Swagger. Um, I hate to keep encouraging Swagger, as I think it's like the single worst move in VGC as far as like trying to make us look like a competitive game. But um, really, there's a ton of special Pokemon in this matchup, and uh, even just using it to burn the berries for Spore would be pretty helpful. So uh, if it's there, I'd like to see it. But 
uh, Sableye is one of those Pokemon that can do a lot of strange things, and we're yeah, since we haven't seen it yet, uh, can still shut. No idea what's uh, inside. Can't forget that Licky Licky is one of the few Pokemon that uh, get the ability own tempo. So maybe if he does have Swagger Sableye, it might not be kind of that, oh, Swagger Spam and see if uh, the RNG works in your favor. So maybe we'll see it, maybe we won't, but just a thing to keep in mind with uh, Licky Licky, of course. And the uh, battle's getting underway. So we'll see how both trainers adjust to what they saw in the previous match. Eager to see what we get here. Uh, I can't imagine uh, there'll be too much of an adjustment on Yamamoto's side, but uh, eager to see what Maryland comes up with here. Yeah, definitely. If it's not broken, why change it? Metagross and Hydreigon for <laughs> Metagross and Hydreigon for Yamamoto, and Maryland comes back out with the Breloom Lyper combo again. So back to where we were in uh, the opening turns of game two. So didn't we play this game once already? Um, I, I, I think I think we've seen this before. <laughs> gotta say, uh, I I didn't like this matchup very much uh, in game two when Maryland hit it, and I thought it was a smart adjustment. And um, I'm a little worried that Maryland didn't adjust himself. Uh, this is kind of you know the game we play in best of threes, where you know something will work in game one, and then usually the player who loses is a little more eager to adjust and ends up with the advantage in game two. And if it goes to a third game, you kind of expect the player who won the first game and lost the second to similarly make an adjustment to try to give himself an advantage here. But uh, only one side's making adjustments here. Um, yeah. There's still one... there's changes he can make other than just his Pokemon though. One thing to note was that in game one. Uh... Maryland didn't really reveal that his Braylon was holding that choice scarf, but in game two, it was its cover was blown pretty well when uh, we saw the Breloom outspeed the Hydreigon. So that's something that uh, Yamamoto knows to his advantage this turn this this time around. Yeah, I mean, if anything, I think Maryland's in a worse position than he was last time because of that. And still, we see this again. Uh, he does have options, though. Um, I would definitely not play it the same way that I did the previous game if I were Maryland, just because. There's a reason it didn't work the first time, even with a good RNG. Uh, going on the offensive here, assuming that Brilliant's moveset isn't just Spore, Dash, and Dash, and Dash would probably be a good plan, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, Lipard coming out with the uh, Fake Out onto Hydreigon, and Breloom coming back out with the Spore onto Hydreigon, putting it to sleep. And there's one turn of sleep right there for Hydreigon, so that uh, takes into account the uh, counter. And then Headbutt from Metagross coming out onto Breloom, and as we saw in Game 1, that is a one-hit knockout. Oh boy, this is a uh, pretty tough spot. Yeah, I'm becoming more and more curious if uh, Breloom actually has moves other than Spore, because I, I feel like if you get the fighting move there, I don't understand why you don't use it rather than just putting it to sleep. You know, it's a uh, faint is the best status effect. <laughs> um, Nine Tails coming back in to replace that Breloom, the fallen Breloom. Uh, fun fact, in 2009, uh, at Nationals, Imperfect Luck actually used a Dark Void Smeargle with Sketch. That's all it knew, Dark Void and Sketch, so maybe maybe that's the Braylon today. <laughs> I, I guess, um, I feel like the, the flaw in Maryland strategy for this series is like, as you might ex expect from someone who's mostly an entertainer, you know, he's, uh, he's putting on a good show here, but you, know, you win Pokemon battles by knocking out enemy Pokemon, and, uh, He's having a lot of fun screwing around here, but I feel like he'd be farther ahead if he'd go on the offensive a little bit more, and uh, he's going to have a hard time doing that now. Uh, we know Lightheart doesn't have any real attacks other than uh, foul play here, so it's going to limit his offense a bit, but Metagross likely not going to stay in and just let Ninetales blow it up. So a double target on Hydreigon here would probably lead to a good situation for him. Um, I feel like there's a better than 50% chance that uh, Flare Blitz straight up knocks out Hydreigon from here, but um, I'm not a methologist, so I don't want to... You know, Hedge my bets on that one. Yeah, I I am kind of actually predicting for Chairman to come in to give that uh, attack boost back to Ninetales. Yeah. So I guess I should have specified that. Chairman would have to come in for that to happen, but I feel like it's uh, just low enough now where Ninetales could probably get the hilarious KO on Hydreigon if he wants to go that route, um, which I think is a good chance of working just because it's uh, asleep already and it's unlikely Metagross is going to open that up. But uh instead we have a Wi Fi error. I knew we had gone too long happens. without one of these. Well yeah, so uh, I guess this is connect. that point in the evening where we apologize for the Wi Fi errors. 
You may remember we, this. We right? went pretty well. We went yeah. We went three matches or so without any Wi-Fi errors, so. Yeah, it's, I, I knew, but things had gone a little bit too well, and there it is. Uh, fortunately, we're still early in the battle, so we're just going to do the same moves here, and we should get back where we were within a couple of minutes. Um, the Wi-Fi system in the DS games, unfortunately, not the best Wi-Fi system I've ever seen, but... Um, at least this wasn't in, like, turn seven after, like, a couple of critical hits and uh, burn RNG and some other stuff that'd be impossible to replicate. So should be fairly easy to get back when we're here. Uh, sorry for the delay. Yeah. Um, who do you think had the uh, best position from where we left off? I I, I think that the, game, the match could still go either way. Yeah, I do too. Um, I actually almost like that Maryland lost a Pokemon really quickly there, which it seems like a silly thing to uh, be happy about. But uh, the problem he's been having in, I guess at least in game two, is that he was not transitioning quickly enough in the beginning of the game. And like he'd get a minor advantage early in the match with the sleep, and then he couldn't do anything with it because he just had two support Pokemon chilling out in the field until they woke up and knocked them out. So because of that quick knockout on Braylon, he gets a quick free switch to Ninetales here. You can actually start turning some damage. So um, I think he's in a much better spot than he was in Game 2. Uh, if he wants to win this game, he's just going to need to turn that into some actual offense. And he's got the potential for offense now, but he's going to have to make some good decisions here. Uh, yeah, if Metagross doesn't protect, he's going to knock it out with uh, Ninetales. Uh, if Metagross does protect, he's going to switch in Cherim and uh, presumably knock that out with uh, Flare Blitz from uh, Ninetales in the Flower Gift boost. So he just, he's got to make the right call here. Now, he is still on his back foot to the point that he's going to have to make a couple correct predictions if he wants to win the game. But uh, the door is open for him this time, I think. Yeah, if there's a chair room, there's a way. Can't forget about that. Um, yeah, I just I... think, uh, speaking of chair room, though, I mean, that'd be the big thing, right? If, even if he mostly loses nine tails to do it, at least giving Cherim a chance to play the game without worrying about getting set on fire by Hydreigon the whole time would be a big play for him, I think. Yeah, um, Cherim, remember, it has nature power, which, uh, as we saw, two, could two-hit knock out the uh, meta. So it's going to be interesting to see how Marilyn decides to take care of that meta growth, either with the nine tails or going through the uh, a bit longer, but a more safe approach with uh, Cherim. Uh, one of my and worries as you too, can see. Uh, so one of my worries here too for Maryland, um I guess we'd forgotten about it, but um and the in game two we never saw the final Pokemon of his opponent there. And if it's uh Cloyster and if Cloyster has choice scarf, uh I'm not sure what he's going to be able to conserve that can actually deal with it. He'd need to have uh probably nine tails and Cherim at reasonably high health to make it difficult enough for Cloyster to you know can't just easily lock into the stab move that's more effective against the lower or the higher HP Pokemon there. So that's going to make things a little bit trickier for him since I can't imagine this Lipard is going to be able to take it out because of its um, lack of something like Swagger to at least give it a chance to fight it. Uh, just get blown up before it got a foul playoff. Yeah. Um, as you can see right now, we're just replaying it and we are back to where we were. So... Uh, let the games begin. This is now live. Well, on the bright side, the players had an extra about three minutes to figure out their play here, so hopefully they'll figure this one out a little quicker than they have recently. Yeah, I still think that Hydreigon is the biggest threat to Maryland's team right now, so maybe he'll look into trying to take care of it, but it's all to Maryland. I mean, he, he knows what he's doing. Despite the fact that he's a personality, he, he knows what he's doing, you know? Looks like we do see that Cherim switch coming in, so I think we know what's happening next. Something's going to get blown up. So Cherim comes in to replace the uh, Lipard. And Flower Gift activates, transforming the unblossomed Cherim into a blossomed Cherim. And Metagross protects, and we'll see where Ninetales goes with it this turn. Flare Blitz into the protecting Metagross, and High Dragon stays asleep. Oh, man, Marilyn, you had him, and you let him off the hook. That was his chance. He could have... We could have like seen that, a, that little like damage. No opportunity cost. It probably would have gotten the knockout. Man, I'm so disappointed. It maybe, was there. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll see it this turn to come. We'll, I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. 
Uh, I mean, the, the position is just going to get more and more so, dangerous for Maryland. Hydreigon is asleep. Because, I mean, every turn that passes, you know, Hydreigon has a higher chance of waking up, and he's got to get rid of it. Uh, I don't know if he's prioritizing that Hydreigon quite as much as he needs to be. You know, if he gets Hydreigon woken up here, uh, it's just going to end the game like it did last time. He's got to get rid of it. Yeah, Hydreigon is the key to victory right now, and hopefully Maryland actually sees it, but... Now that Metagross, I mean, that was his turn last turn. That would have been a free, just player blitz, fire gem, stab, flower gift in the sun onto Hydreigon. And let's face it, we all want to see how much damage it does to that Hydreigon. Yeah, because like, even if you miss the KO, you get a second shot at it the next turn. So you get it no matter what. Whereas now there's risk. Because so, if he doesn't get that knockout, there's a higher chance that Hydreigon's going to wake up. Um, if I'm Maryland here, I just fire the, f the flare blitz away at Hydreigon and probably pop a grass move on Metagross expecting a switch but uh there's more risk now like there's more plays on the other side and it's more likely that Hydreigon will uh both wake up and survive I guess because he need both to actually have a threat here but the odds are high enough that it scares me even if Maryland makes the right play now uh, there's just a lot that can go wrong yeah this, this actually plays some mind games with Yamamoto uh Yamamoto might think that his Metagross is in danger and maybe is going to try to bait that Flare Blitz into a water type, only letting Marilyn hit the Hydreigon, hopefully, with the Flare Blitz, and opening up a door for Cherim to come in with the uh, with the strangely powerful Seed Bomb. I, mean, I think that's the play you have to make, but uh, we'll see what he does here. Yeah, uh, Marilyn obviously trying to take time. Oh, never mind, he's inserted his move. And Yamamoto now, uh, we await for his inputs. I mean, high pressure move for both of these guys. I feel a little bad for them. You know, they've uh, jumped in here, you know, helped us publicize the game a little bit, and uh, they're in the deciding match of the series. You know, probably not quite how they expected to, this uh, series to look, especially poor Maryland. Uh, Team USA took a big 3 0 lead and choked it away, and uh, down to 3 3 in a game three for Maryland here. A little more pressure, but it looked like he was going to have a few hours ago. Uh, let's face it, everybody wanted to see this, you know, the two per Pokemon personalities coming down to be the deciding match for a U.S. versus Japan friendly. So I think this is what everybody dreamed of when, when we saw that Maryland and Yamamoto were going to be paired against each other. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't think it was going to happen, but uh, you know, hard to get more exciting than this. Uh, I, I, you know, we were hyping up this match, but I kind of thought it would be a letdown, but uh, I was wrong. This is actually as exciting as we said it was going to be for once. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, when I first saw the uh, the lineup, which was posted yesterday on Nugget Bridge, I was like, oh, I mean, hopefully it gets to them, but I don't think it's going to get to them. And now, what do you know? We're watching this 3-3 series tight, and it comes down to the last game, too. What more I mean, could the match is pretty ridiculous, too. Like, I mean, I didn't know what we were going to get with this one. Like, uh, as I've been joking with Ray and some other people about it over the course of the week, but, uh, I was a little nervous about what kind of match we'd get here, but uh, I am totally okay with a match where Cherim and Ninetales have everyone on the edges of their seats. I mean, like, I'm hoping that they haven't been on the edge too long because they're taking kind of a long time to move here. So if people are still on the edge of their seats, like, they got to be tipping by now. And, like, if this takes much longer, they're going to end up, like, face first on their desk. So, you know, everyone, uh, we do, you know, recommend wearing seat belts while you watch Pokemon battles. Um, maybe that'll help. Also, another public service announcement from Nugget Bridge, wear seat belts when you're in a vehicle. Um, on the bright right side, now... uh, so we're all learning the importance of why we have a timer uh, for moves in real life. Yeah, this is a pretty big turn for Yamamoto, and he's definitely trying to take his time to decide. I mean, it's hard to blame him, too. Um, I mean, no, it's not hard to blame him, but I can understand why. You know, you don't want to throw this one away for your team and your country. Yeah, for team Japan with all thousands of his viewers, and Cherim opting to protect this turn, and Metagross coming out with the bullet punch onto Ninetales for a decent amount of damage, critical hit. And the Flare Blitz comes out, Fire Gem activates, and that targets down the Metagross, and Metagross comes down, and that's going to do a lot of recoil damage to Ninetales. It takes a good bit there, but still, Ninetales, surviving the fight another day. Uh, Ninetales, and Hydreigon stays asleep this turn, so that is also pretty big. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Once again, these sleeps seem to be lasting forever, um, but 
Uh, not the play we were hoping for there. We still have the same problem we were in before, where you got to get rid of Hydreigon somehow. Like, I, just, I don't see how this is going to happen yet. Yeah, that turn that turn was pretty crucial. Terum kind of just sat there and protected itself into nothing. Yeah, I mean, we know um, Cherim doesn't have an attack that's going to do any real damage to, to uh, Hydreigon here other than Seed Bomb, which uh, will do trivial damage at best. Like, I'm guessing, like, maybe 30% if he's lucky, which is probably generous. So, like, if Ninetales doesn't hit Hydreigon before it goes down, Marilyn will not win this game. He has to hit it. If he doesn't do more damage than this, there's just no way Hydreigon's going to go down in time. So I'm hoping he realizes this and gets some damage out. He still has one more turn. Uh, without the Fire Gem, uh, Flurbits isn't going to knock it out, but at least it would get some you know important damage there to start wearing it down. Uh, it just, I'm concerned he may be waiting too long. Yeah, even then, um, last last game we saw Yamamoto bring that Amoongus. So a Flare Blitz, I mean, Ninetales only has one more Flare Blitz in it until it has to go, until it gets knocked out. So that's also pretty important to know. Yeah, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm a little concerned about the lack of the Flare Blitz. He had two opportunities to hit Eye Dragon with it. And I feel like the issue more than anything is just that uh, Marilyn doesn't seem to be uh, realizing how big of a threat Eye Dragon is to what he's got here. And uh, that's a big part of VGC, you know, is just knowing what you need to prioritize. As I mean, one one knockout isn't the same value as another. You've got to get the Pokemon that stop your Pokemon from sweeping. And there's a reason that the two games Hydreigon was in, uh, Maryland's had some trouble here. It's got a great matchup with Maryland's team, and he's got to find a way to get rid of it. And he's just kind of letting it hang out. Yeah, you can't forget, though, um, if Yamamoto brings in the Amoongus again, that the uh, Flare Blitz could go off onto the Amoongus, and then Breloom might, if it does know any fighting attacks, could go off against that Hydreigon. Well, it got knocked out by the Zen Headbutt, right? So it's just these two and uh, Lightbulb right, left. Right, right. It got knocked out. It, it is late. <laughs> yeah, I know how you feel, man. Well, that's why I'm worried, though, because like, there isn't any reasonable ways of dealing with Hydreigon left. So, like, other than Flare Blitzing it and, like, basically getting a crit or hoping that residual damage can take it out. There's nothing else left. And what do you see Cloyster here? Um, if this is Choice Scarf, I believe that the game is over. Yeah, Choice Scarf Cloyster outspeeds a ridiculous amount of Pokemon in the metagame, and Skill Link is such a good ability. So Cloyster comes out, and Ninetales and Cherim have quite a ways to work. Yeah, I mean, the, the only out I can see here is uh, Cherim's got a double protect, probably. Ninetales probably has to, like, crit Flare Blitz Hydreigon, and then you get the fake out Seed Bomb next turn, and that is asking a lot. I what? just, I, I can't imagine any other way you get out of this one, because you've got to knock out Hydreigon here so that you can bring Lifeheart in and focus down Cloyster, otherwise there's no way out. What What is Cherim's base speed? Um, I, I feel comfortable that it's lower than all of these things. Okay. Um, it's not much. Yeah, so... Marilyn kind of in a corner now. Trying to see what he can pull off. If he can pull off something, this would be probably one of the best comebacks we've ever seen on stream. But, like I said, if there's a chair, there's a way. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Cherim's going to have to grow, like, wings to go ahead with its uh, and like maybe a cannon to go with the little flower thing because we're in trouble otherwise I I still want to know what Cherim's last move is uh, I've heard it's sunny day but sunny day to reset the sun yeah, could... <laughs> which makes sense I guess and not it's not particularly useful in this matchup but uh, you know, with a team as sun centric as anything involving Cherim is it definitely makes sense yeah definitely definitely want to keep that flower gift activated uh, as long as possible so we still await Marilyn's inputs and Yamamoto's inputs to continue on the turn. It, it looks pretty bleak right now. And Cherim will switch out, and in comes the Lipard. And Skill Link here will ensure Cloyster gets enough hits and on. Scarf! It's Scarf, Skill Link, Bicycle Spear. So. That's a knockout on nine tails and hit three times, knocking out the nine tails. And Hydreigon finally wakes up and fires off a flamethrower onto Lipard, sun boosted, 
Life Orb boosted and gets the one hit knockout on Lipard. And that should be it. Valiant battle by Maryland there. I put on a great show for us, and I think uh, the audience really appreciated the entertainment of this series. But uh, unfortunately, Maryland and Team USA are going to come up a little bit short here. Uh, 4 3 in the series for Team Japan, and I believe uh, 3 1 in this game. So we almost got him, but not this time. Yeah, as a parting gift to everybody, Maryland sends out the Cherum, and we get to watch it transform one last time. Possibly the last time we'll ever see it transform in competitive play. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm being completely serious when I say this is the first and last series I ever saw a Cherum in, in all of Generation 5. I literally had never seen this animation before, prior or since Generation 4, which I think it was slightly different in. Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely interesting to watch. I mean, Maryland's team is pretty well-crafted, and Yamamoto's team was also pretty well-crafted, too. Yeah, and i got to give uh, props to both these guys, too. Uh, you know, not competitive players that quit the same level as some of the rest of us are, so yeah, didn't know what quite a show we'd get here, but uh, it's a great match here, and, uh, and I really enjoyed it. Played hard. Hope the audience did, too. It was a good game. Both teams played hard. Uh, Kloyster getting off three hits onto Cherum to finally knock it out. And that's it. Japan will take the whole friendly 4-3, to three, coming back from a 0-3 to three deficit, starting off with Boo Man's uh, Drift Bloom shenanigans against Riyazaki. Uh Scott, any closing words? Uh, not, nothing too much. I just hope everyone enjoyed the show here. I uh, had seven good matches, and well, we had six good matches and a match that involved double team Drift Bloom, which is still <laughs> a pretty good ratio, I think. Hey, I mean, it worked. You know, it took us all by surprise. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you get the rolls, and uh, he was running hot. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, we apologize again for the, te- the technical difficulties with the Wi-Fi. You know, we had some DCs during matches and some issues connecting. And, well, this is the game we've got. I mean, I'm sure most of you are used to this by now. But we do what we can, and with what we've got, this is about the best we're going to be able to do for now. Hopefully, Generation 6 will be better, and... This will likely be the last, uh, I guess, show match until Generation 6. So here's hoping that things are better soon. Yeah. Um, last uh, Again, this is the last uh, Generation 5 friendly that we'll have. Uh, we'll definitely probably have more Generation 6 friendlies to come. So stay tuned for those and stay tuned for any other streams that Nugget Bridge will host. Um, I guess that's it. This is Dwee. And this was Scott. Follow Evan on Twitter at NBPlad. And thanks, guys. Have a great night. Go get some sleep.